Good morning, good morning, good morning. Praise the Lord, everybody. Welcome you to our Sunday morning worship experience, worship in the word. And certainly we thank God for your presence on today. <clears throat> we do honor God who is sovereign and supreme to his son, Jesus Christ, who is Savior and Lord, and to the Holy Ghost, who is our comforter, leader, teacher, and our guide. He who leads us in the way of all truth and righteousness. To each of you in your respective places, we greet you with Jesus' joy and certainly in divine love. Well, this morning, uh, first Sunday in March, uh, we'd like to call your attention to James. That's New Testament, James chapter 1. Uh, we begin reading at verse 12. That's the book of James, chapter 1, verse 12. If you're there, or when you get there, you will find these words recorded. Blessed is the man that endureth temptation, for when he is tried, he shall receive the crown of life which the Lord hath promised to them that love him. Let no man say when he is tempted, I am tempted of God. For God cannot be tempted with evil, neither tempteth he any man. But every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust or desires and enticed. Verse 15, then when lust hath conceived, it bringeth forth sin, and sin, when it is finished, bringeth forth death. Do not err or be deceived, my beloved brethren. Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above and cometh down from the Father of lights with whom is no variables or variations, neither shadow of turning. Shall we pray? Father, we thank you now for this preaching and teaching moment. We pray now, God, that you release your power, your presence upon this, your vessel, that I may preach and teach with power and with clarity. Anoint us the more that we might hear that we might believe, receive, explore, apply, and share this word. In advance, we give you all the honor, all of the glory, and all of the praise. For it's in Jesus' precious name that we pray. And every heart said, Amen. Well, today, we want to speak from these words. <clears throat> endure the temptations or endure the test and temptations of life. Endure to tolerate the test and temptations of life. My brothers and sisters, as we live life, as we go through this journey of life, I want to remind us that we will be confronted with tests and temptations. It's a part of our journey. So uh, when we have been tested or when we have been tempted, just know that it is all a part of life. However, we need to remember uh, two general things here, and that is God will not tempt you. The devil will, but God will test you. So I want to begin this message today by uh, simply asking a question. And that is, what good gifts have you received from God? Think about it. In James chapter one, verse 17, we are reminded of the source of all gifts. Listen what it says in verse 17 of James chapter one. It says, every good gift 
and every perfect gift is from above and cometh down from the Father of lights, with whom is no variations or variableness, neither shadow of turning. So, all good in your life comes from one source, and that is God. Now, my brothers and sisters, it would be good to remind ourselves regularly of how God has blessed us. Sometimes I believe we forget how blessed we really are because of situations and circumstances that perhaps are not going our way. Uh, then we forget how blessed we really are. Well, if you don't believe you're blessed, let me remind you of some things right here. God wakes you each morning. He gives you heartbeat for the day. He gives you air to breathe, food and water for substance, and friends and relatives and associates to nurture uh, our lives. So, I believe that we should even in the midst of crises, in the midst of adverse circumstances, that we should make a habit of thanking God for his blessings. Now, that's going to lead me to my first point today. <clears throat> and perhaps you are asking the question right now, how do we endure or tolerate the tests and temptations of life? Well, the first thing I want us to remember, if we are going to do that, is <clears throat> that we must cultivate an attitude of gratitude. What does that do for us? Well, having an attitude of gratitude, having an attitude of thanksgiving, this provides us with the power to endure life test and strengthen us to follow Jesus' example of gratefulness. You see, many times we don't get the blessing that God has for us because we are not grateful for what we already have. Are you with me? You see, my brothers and sisters, Jesus the Christ filled his life with gratitude. And we must understand that Jesus Christ is our example you know, you, you shouldn't pattern your life after anyone else but Jesus Christ. As Christians, we, we are Christ-like. So we pattern ourselves not after Moses, not after Paul, not after Solomon, not after Peter, but we pattern our lives after the Savior who is Jesus Christ. So his life was filled with gratitude, thanksgiving. Before feeding the 5,000 in the Bible or resurrecting Lazarus from the grave or leaving the upper room to go to Calvary, guess what? Jesus the Christ gave thanks to his father. That's in St. John uh, chapter 6 verse 11 and also in Matthew chapter 26. So now, <clears throat> the question is, or the statement is, if Jesus could sing praises and give thanks to God as he headed to Calvary to be placed in the hands of cruel men to, to die for our sins. If he could praise God and thank God, we have no excuse, none whatsoever, for failing to bless the Lord at all times and keep praises continually on our lips. That's what Psalm chapter 34 verse 1 says. I will bless the Lord at all times. And many times we say that when we are in, uh, in public, but in private, we forget to bless the Lord at all times. So cultivating an attitude of gratitude simply means being ready to thank God even when facing hardship in our lives. An example in the Bible 
was the prophet Daniel. Daniel provides an example of how to do this in Daniel chapter 6, verse number 10. So turn with me. You're going to have to use your Bibles a little bit today. Turn with me to Daniel <clears throat> chapter 6, verse number 10. Listen what it says. <clears throat> Now, when Daniel knew that the writing was signed, he went into his house and his windows being open in his chamber toward Jerusalem. He kneeled down or he kneeled upon his knees three times a day and prayed and gave God thanks before his God as he did often time. Now, Daniel prayed with gratitude when it was actually illegal to pray. Mm -hmm. Daniel prayed when prayer meant risking death at the jaws of hungry lions. So what does Daniel show us? Well, Daniel shows us how to endure life's trials by living with gratitude or thanksgiving. Throughout human history, my brothers and sisters, God our Father has given abilities to his children that enable us to maximize our opportunities. God is always doing that. Well, let me see if I can get some examples from the Bible. Remember Joseph? Well, Joseph and Daniel could interpret dreams. That's opportunity. Esther possessed the gift of beauty. Samson was given extraordinary strength. <clears throat> David was given the ability or the abilities uh, to be a warrior and a musician. Solomon, y'all remember him? He was given, <clears throat> he was given Wisdom, the gift of wisdom. You see, my brothers and sisters, remember this. The God who blessed those before our time is still in the blessing business. Continuing to supply us with the abilities we need to make a positive difference in our world. God is still God. He's still sitting on the throne and he's still releasing gifts into uh, his children so we can do what we need to do in this world, even in the midst of a global pandemic. So because God is still doing that, then we should give thanks for his goodness. For his guidance, for his greatness, we should always be in a thanksgiving or a gratitude mode or mood. So my question I'm going to ask us right here is, how often do you thank God? Because many in Christendom go through the day, every day, most of the days, without giving God thanks. So this is personal. How often do you thank God? Do you thank him only when your life is, uh, do you thank him when your life is filled with pain, problems, and perplexities? Do you give God thanks even when things are going well? How often do you thank God, our Father. Well, the Bible teaches us that we should always be giving thanks. So, my first point today, if we're going to endure the tests and temptations of life, then we must possess, possess or cultivate an attitude of gratitude. <clears throat> The second thing, if we're going to endure the tests and trials of life, is 
be tenacious. That is to hold firm, to be firm. <clears throat> My brothers and sisters, hear me well. When going through life's tests, my question to us today, have you ever wondered if it's worth persevering? Is it worth being tenacious? Is it worth holding firm to what you believe or holding firm to your faith? After all, what's in it for you? Do you ever ask that question? What's in it for me? My brothers and sisters, hear me well right along in here. When you learn to anticipate or expect God's rewards for your faithfulness, it becomes easier to endure life's tribulations or life's tests and temptation. Let's go to the text, St. James chapter 1, and let's note a um, notice verse 12. Listen what it says. It says, blessed is the man, that includes woman, that endureth temptation, that are able to tolerate <clears throat> temptation. For when he is tried, he shall receive the crown of life, which the Lord has promised to them that love him. Now, this verse is a wonderful Bible verse. Why do I say that? Because it shows us that God wants us to anticipate his rewards. Now, turn with me to Matthew chapter 19, verse 27. I warned you earlier that we're going to use a Bible today quite a bit so we can see this whole picture of what I'm trying to get through to you on today. Matthew chapter 19, <clears throat> verse 27. Listen, listen what it's, what, what's recorded. Then answered Peter and said unto him, Behold, we have forsaken all and followed thee. What shall we have therefore? Jesus responded by saying unto them, Verily I say unto you, that ye which have followed me in the regeneration when the Son of Man shall sit in the throne of his glory, ye shall, or ye, sh ye also shall sit upon twelve thrones, judging the twelve tribes of Israel. Verse 29. And everyone that hath forsaken houses of brethren or sisters or father or mother a wife, or children, or lands, for my name's sake, shall receive a hundredfold and shall inherit everlasting life. Now, <clears throat> let's look closely at that for a few minutes. <clears throat> you see, what Jesus was literally saying here is he wants to encourage us with expert expectation or anticipation of rewards because Galatians 6 and 9 says and let us not be weary in well doing for in due season we shall reap if we faint not so <clears throat> Paul in his letter to Galatia reminds us that a certain, don't miss this, a certain harvest will come to those who don't stop doing good for the kingdom of God, even though the task can be weary. So 
There are going to be some testing times and some temptation, but we need to remember to be tenacious, to hold on, hold firm on to God's word. Are you with me? So then, as you and I anticipate our reward, know that eternal life is a part of the package. <clears throat> that, that is that we will live beyond our life here on earth with God. That's good news. So as we endure the tests and temptations of life, remember, first of all, to cultivate an attitude of gratitude. And secondly, be tenacious, hold firm, don't let go, hang in there. The third thing I want us to be reminded of, of we're going to endure the tests and temptations of life is <clears throat> and this is a big one right here. It's simple, but it is huge. That is, don't blame God. Why do I say that? Because many times, even as Christians, those of us who say that we are close to God, when tests and temptations come, we have the tendency to blame God. I've talked with people uh, through my years of uh, preaching and pastoring that they uh, blame God for losing a loved one or they blame God for losing a, a job, a career, a business. But, but, but I want to remind us when we're going through our testing and temptations, uh, those, those things that happens in our lives, don't blame God. When tempted, whom should you blame? Well, again, I want to say, I'm trying to drive this home, don't blame God. Let's look at verse 13 of our text. St. James <clears throat> Chapter 1, verse 13. Let's look at that again. <clears throat> listen listen what, what it's saying. <clears throat> it says, Let no man say when he is tempted, I am tempted of God, for God cannot be tempted with evil, neither tempteth he in him, man. So, that let us know right there that God is the source of our temptation. And we have been tempted, it's not God doing it. So you know who the other spirit is? The good spirit of God. You know, the other spirit is the devil, or Satan, or whatever name you want to um, call him. So, so the, the source of our temptation is not God. God's plan is to give you and I a future and a hope to bring you and I to a desired destination. I believe I have a scripture that will back me up with that. So now I want you to turn to Jeremiah chapter 29 verse 11. A little Bible exercise good for you. Okay, if you're there, listen what it says. For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, saith the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you and expect it in. You see that? Verse 12. Then shall ye call upon me, and ye shall go and pray unto me, and I will hearken or listen unto you. Verse 13. And ye shall seek me and find me 
when ye shall search for me with all of your heart. So then, what is the source of our temptations? Well, if we go back to James to our text and look at the next verse, then we'll get some clarity. So let's look at verse 14 of James. <clears throat> but every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lusts or desires and enticed. Hmm. Uh huh. James and verse 14 provides the answer. So then, what is James really saying? I want to break this down to the lowest term. James is saying the root of temptations, the root of our temptations is our own lust or our own evil desires. You see, my brothers and sisters, we are born in sin and shaped in iniquity. That's Psalm chapter 51, verse 5. And our inheritance, watch this, our inheritance is the inclination, really the desire to do evil. From Adam, the first man, because we are descendants of Adam who did evil, and because we are children of Adam, then <clears throat> our, because of our inheritance is the inclination or the desire to do evil. We have a flammable, watch this, a flammable area <clears throat> in our hearts that can be ignited by temptation. Did you get that? Now, let's take that a step further. My flammable area may be different from yours. Nonetheless, each of us have a sin nature that leads us toward transgressions. So when you hear people saying that they live above sin, they lie. Because sin will come into your midst and without Christ, without Christ in our lives and controlling our lives, we will fail and we will fall to to sin because it's in us because of the first man, Adam. And of course, we, we know now because of Christ, then we can be forgiven and we can, we can go forward. But, but sin, the sin nature will come up. That's why Paul said that we need to mortify or we need to make sure that we, 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 we cut sin off. We need, to, we need to do that on a daily basis because it's coming up. So then throughout the seasons of our existence, we will continue to be pulled by sinful urges and desires. I don't care how saved you are, the devil will try you. He tried Jesus. Jesus was the son of God. He was God in the flesh and the devil tried Jesus. So guess what? He will try you. So that means that we are going to be tempted by the devil and we're going to have some tests and many times those tests are sent to us by God. So how do we endure? How do we tolerate the tests and temptations of life? Well, the first thing I told you was that we need to make sure that we cultivate an attitude of gratitude. Be thankful for what God has done and then be tenacious. Hold firm. And then, then now I'm saying, don't blame God for you being tempted because God doesn't tempt any man. 
Our temptations come from the evil one who is the devil. So don't blame God for your own lust and temptation. It is work of the enemy. The fourth thing I want us to uh, remember today, if we're going to endure the tests and temptations of life, is simply remember the wages of sin. Now, I thought you, I, 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 you know, you might have thought that this, this lesson today, this message today was going to be deep. Well, this really is deep. But we got to learn how to obtain the things on the surface before we always want to get something deep. Simply as this, remember the wages of sin. If you're going to endure the tests and temptations of life, remember the wages of sin. To endure life temptations, it is important to remember the results of continuing giving in to sin. That is the sin of commission and also the sin of omission. Uh -huh. Let's look at verse 15 of the text. Listen what it says. Then when lust have or evil desires have Conceive, it brings forth sin, and sin which, uh, when it is finished, bringeth forth death. We have learned, if we've been in church for any amount of time, that the wages of sin is death. So you got to remember that. All through your life, all through your journey from earth to heaven, you need to remember that the wages of sin is death. Now, this may seem elementary, but this is an important insight. Whenever you are faced with a temptation, remember its ultimate aim is death. When Satan is tempting you to do the things that you know God told you not to do, the ultimate goal is death. The devil, your enemy, is aiming to kill you. Well, Jesus reminded us, remember? He reminded us when he was here that Satan came to steal, kill, and destroy. So he can't be my friend. Watch this. This thing about temptation and how the enemy uses temptation is like the game of chess. The devil seeks to checkmate us. Uh huh. And the Bible describes him, the devil, Satan, as a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. He's trying to destroy us, so we can't allow the devil to control our lives even when he is tempting us. Those who want to avoid sin's final destination must endure temptation. Listen. By keeping the outcome of sin in mind we have we have to see or we see how foolish it is to envy sinners let me say that again by keeping the outcome of sin in mind or remembering the wages of sin we see how foolish it is for us, especially those of us who are Christian, is to envy sinners. Many times we envy sinners because of materialistic things. We envy the pimp or we envy the drug pusher because they got the fine cars and live in the fine house and got the jewelry and all that. But it's foolish to envy them. 
if they're sinners because the wages of sin is death. The Bible says they will soon be cut off and destroyed. Hmm. So my question is right here. How often have we seen reports about someone living in the fast lane who has come to an untimely and premature death? How many times have we heard that? We see it every day, either on, a, or, or on television or hear it on the radio or if you're on the Internet or social media. You hear this all the time. We read about it. We read about stars and, and athletes who are shot or crashed while driving intoxicated uh, 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 for some other reasons that they have uh, taken some type of drug, drug overdose, and health complications from steroid use and other things. My brothers and sisters, hear me right here. The knowledge that sin through pleasure or pleasurable, the knowledge of sin, though it is pleasurable, I say it that way, is an enemy, not a friend. The knowledge that sin, though it is pleasurable, not a friend will provide wisdom we need to endure life and to endure life tests and temptations. I hope you got that. Well, so now if you're going to endure the tests and temptations of life, we first need to remember to cultivate an attitude of gratitude. Then we need to be tenacious. Don't blame God, number three. Number four, remember the wages of sin is death. And number five, which I think is very important. We're going to endure the tests and trials of life. Number five is help others through their trials. You got to understand, my brothers and sisters, that God saved us. And he has given us gifts and talent to help others. That's our mandate. So help others through their trials. One great way to do this is once you have endured your tests, share your good news with someone else. Many times we keep it to ourselves and we know God has brought us through some tough times, but, but we don't want to share it. And, it's, and someone out there is going through the same thing that you went through. Just need your testimony. My brothers and sisters, as I bring this message to a close on today, one of the most helpful things you can do for someone facing trials is to tell them about difficulties God helped you endure. It. Mm -hmm. Isn't that what nameth, or nameth in the Bible, for Second Kings chapter five? Isn't that what nameth made did? A little bit of the story, and we're going to be finished on today. Name of Maid was a prisoner of war with her own problems. Name of was in a war and, she, and he took this maid as a slave and took this maid home with him. Name of was a great warrior. Okay, so now the maid <clears throat> is a prisoner of war with her own problems serving in the house in the household of Naaman. She was a servant to Naaman's wife. But, I, but, but although she was a slave or a servant in uh, enemy territory, she accepted her plight in doing the test. What did she do? Listen carefully. 
she turned her concern to the pain in her master's house. So now we need to turn one more time and we're going to be done today. So let's turn to 2 Kings chapter 5, verse 1. So we can get the picture. 2 Kings chapter 5, verse 1. Now, Naaman, captain of the host of the king of Syria, was a great man with his master and honorable because by him the Lord had given deliverance unto Syria. He was also a mighty man in valor, but he was a leper. Verse 2. And the Syrians had gone out by companies and had brought away captives out of the land of Israel, a little maid. And she waited on Naaman's wife. I said that earlier. Verse 3. And she said unto her mistress, Would God my Lord were with the prophet that is in Samaria, for he would recover of his leprosy, be healed of his leprosy. So that's, that's, that's the story. So let's look at it for the next couple of minutes. Remember, now she's a slave in, in name of house. She could have had a different attitude because she's a slave. She's working in name of house, waiting on name of wife and all of that. She could have had a different attitude. Actually, rejoicing that this enemy soldier was dying of a dreadful, uncurable disease called leprosy. But she didn't. Instead, she sought to help the man who had captured her. She shared good news that would bring abundance to Naaman's house. So now, right here, I'm going to ask you a question. Do you hoard your blessings or share them with others? Give that a little moment, a little time to sink in. When God has blessed you and enabled you to endure life's tests and temptations, I want to encourage us today to follow the example of name of maid. And what is that? That is to share the good news. If God has helped you to get through your trials and tribulations and testings and, and all of that, share that good news with someone, especially in the midst of what we are going through globally today and especially in our nation and in our communities. My brothers and sisters, Seeing the gain that your pain can bring into the lives of others will inspire you to continue to endure future hardships. Did you get that? I think I need to rewind that. Seeing the gain through your pain can bring into the lives of others. What it can bring into the life of others will inspire you or should inspire you to continue to endure future hardships. Because hardships will come. Temptations will come because it's a part of life. Testing times will come. But when you learn how to share how God has brought you through with someone else, that enables you to endure future tests and future temptations. Don't be a hoarder of your blessings. Share them. As I said on Wednesday, we are to be a funnel we should allow the blessings of God to flow through us to someone else. 
Don't try to keep them all for yourself. Because once you share them, then God will bless you with more. But if you try to hold on to them and say, in essence, let them get it the best way they can, that's not Christ-like. Christ shared what he had with us so we can have what we need to share with others. So my brothers and sisters, if we're going to endure the tests and temptations of life, then we must cultivate an attitude of gratitude. Give God thanks. We must be tenacious. Hold firm to what the word of God says. And don't blame God for your temptations. It comes from evil desires or lust. Then remember the wages of sin is death. Whether it's sin of commission or sin of omission, the wages of sin is death. And then fifthly or lastly, help others through their trials. And watch God make it easy for you to endure the trials that you will face in the future. Shall we pray? Father, we thank you now for this privilege and this opportunity to come together on today. We thank you for your word. And we ask now, God, that your word that was spoken on today, that it will sink deeply into our hearts, our minds, and our spirits. That we will become better better Christians, better disciples, better ambassadors of yours. We pray now, God, that we won't just be hearers of your word, but we will be doers of your word. And we pray for those who may be listening who don't know Jesus Christ as their savior. We pray now, God, that they will become saved because you have declared in your word that you want every man, you want mankind saved. So if you're listening on today or watching and you're not saved, I would ask you just pray this prayer with me. Lord God, I'm a sinner. I need to be saved. I need the gift of salvation. Forgive me for my sins. Come into my heart and make me a new creature, a new creation. I receive you as Lord and Savior of my life. I believe if you prayed that prayer on today, you are saved. So I want to encourage you to connect with a Bible teaching, Bible believing church so you can grow in what you have just confessed. That you can grow in your salvation. And if you need us for help, you can call our church phone number. That's Innovation Baptist Church, 850-575-0818. Or you can log on to our website, innovationbaptistchurch.org. And someone will help you, assist you along the way. And perhaps you are saved, but you have backslidden. You have walked away from the presence of the Lord and you need to come back. I want to encourage you today to do it today. Don't wait until tomorrow. Don't wait another minute. Do it right now. Because God is waiting on you to return to him. Make a decision. Make a new commitment to return to a God who loves you in spite of you. And I pray that you would do that on today. Well, my brothers and sisters, I thank you for sharing with us on today. We do uh, invite you back on Wednesday for our Gospel Explosion pastoral teachings at 6.30 p.m. on Wednesday. Uh, if you need uh, a replay of this message, you can log on to our website, innovationbaptistchurch.org. And you can get a replay of this message and you can even share it with someone else that you think that might need to be reminded how to endure the test and temptations of life. God bless you. Be safe, be strong and be blessed. Certainly is our prayer. <laughs>